Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the call. We have Chris Thompson and Chris Partlow. I've asked them both to come in and share how they deal with common objections, like, you know, the typical, well, I got to think about it first, or I need to speak with my kids first, and, and any other objection that they give you when we get to the, the end of the presentation and we go for the close. Chris Partlow, where you at, buddy? Uh, I am here. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear, man. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind, maybe share some some of your technique with us, what, what you do. Well, honestly, you know, as far as objection goes, you know, there's only really a couple. It's it's mainly the the price, you know, that's why they've put it off this long. So you know, if you can really help them to find something in your budget. So if you've ever worked, there's a lot of disability. So their biggest, their biggest sticking point is just trying to find something that they can even afford. So I'll start out with a certain level and, oh yeah, that sounds great. I'd love to do that, but let me talk with, you know, so-and-so or, you know, let me think about this. And like, I totally understand you're like me, you got to mull things over, but just be upfront with me. Is it more of the cost that is the issue uh, or is there something else that's stopping you? And they'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, it is kind of the, the cost. And and then you always do your drop sales. So, okay, well, how about we do this? And and then, oh, well, if you don't do this, you know, what's the alternative? You know, you said you wanted this to be for your daughter so she doesn't have to come up with, you know, your funeral expenses. And people, you know, you just never know what's going to happen tomorrow, the day after. So at least put something in place, whether it's 10, you can always add more later, but at least don't leave this burden on to them. And then I'll bring up certain people that have passed away, you know, in the news recently, some actors, some actresses that have passed out of the blue in their 40s and 50s. And and you don't really want to make that, I mean, because you never know, tomorrow is never guaranteed. And so let's go ahead and at least put something in place. That's my biggest thing is put something. I don't care if it's 10,000 or 7,000, it beats a hole in the wall, you know? And I actually had a client that I sold last Wednesday, sold her the policy, wrote the beneficiary down and to Monday, the beneficiary died. So you never know what's going to happen at any day. So you need to like, Hey, look, you know, tomorrow is not guaranteed. So we need to get this done now. Wow. That's pretty intense. So between the time you sold the client and today, which was last week, they actually already saw what can happen. They, they uh, saw the death. Absolutely. Um, Had to put in a change of beneficiary form before the policy ever got issued. Wow. So basically what you're saying is you keep it conversational. You know, when they bring, when they bring up the objection, whatever it is, you know, look guys, we, and we talked about this on the training call the other, the other day, it's usually about trust and or money. So that's why we use the system. That's why we teach you to do what we teach you to do in, in the order. So um, you keep it conversational. And then of course you, you address the money and then you do your price drop close. Good stuff, Chris. Uh, and one thing I will add, you know, when I talk with the client, I paint a picture of their daughter going to the funeral home and being turned away because they have zero coverage. So I say, hey, look, you know, if you have ever been through the process with no money or no policy in place and you walk into the funeral home, they're going to say, hey, you know, your mom was a lovely woman, I'm sure. I'm sorry for your loss. But hey, let's schedule when you have money and come back another time. And you don't want to put that on them after losing you. So if you walk in, well, hey, you know, I've got five or six thousand or seven thousand dollars in coverage. At least they'll have a conversation with you, get the ball rolling, make sure that, you know, some of this is taken care of and then you can work out the rest. But if you go in empty handed, they're going to basically turn you away until you have something. And then you're now go fund me, raising money at church borrowing from the bank, all of this when you could have taken care of it for 30 or $40 at the least. You're painting the picture. You're talking them through the whole scenario. Thank you for coming on and sharing that with us. I've asked uh, Chris Thompson to come on too. If you're there, buddy. I am here. Excellent. Thank you very much. So yeah, please, if you wouldn't mind, maybe Maybe paint up, you know, add to what to what Chris just shared, but maybe paint more of a picture of what you're doing on the front end, you know, what you're doing to to build up to that 
so that to, to minimize the objection. Yeah. So first of all, the trust to me is extremely important. I think you get a lot less objections if you have built the trust leading up to that point. Once you've went through the price, you went through everything, you have to really build, build that rapport to, to have less objections. Now, you're still going to get those objections. And as the two Doug talked about, you know, there's the two most popular ones you're going to get every single time. But if you have built your trust up, it's going to be way easier to overcome those objections because you're still going to get them. But because they trust you, if you say the right things when you hit that objection, most of the time you'll still get that sale. Now, obviously, you're not getting everybody. It's not going to work on everybody. But what I typically do, once I get to that point and I know I've built up the trust, I've, I've done my part, I've, uh, like Chris was saying, I've, I've built up in their, in their minds how important it is to have something because we don't want that to fall back on our families. So once we get to that point and they say, you know, I need to think about it. Well, one of the lines I use a lot and I, and I tend to be successful with is, well, you know what? This plan's perfect for that because we're not worried about Because like Doug said, and, and Chris mentioned, it's 90% of the time, it's because of the dollar wise uh, when they're saying that. It's not because they just really need to think about it. It's because they probably don't have the money at that moment because it hasn't been said yet. They don't know if they're probably fixing need to give you money like today, right now. So in their mind, they're saying that because most of these people, like the other Chris said, they're on a fixed income, they're on disability, and they don't have that money right then. So the way you can offset that and make them feel comfortable without them having to come out and tell you, I don't have the money right now because nobody wants to say that. Like, you don't want to make them feel embarrassed. Say, like, look, th this plan's perfect for that because what we're going to do, Ms. Jones, we're going to set this up to start next month. So it's not even going to start till the third of next month. So we have like 20 days still in this month left. You got plenty of time to think about it. If you decide you need to make a change between now and then, no problem. All you got to do is call the company if you need to lower the amount or even if you want to go up, just call me. I'll help you with that but at least you'll have something in place and it's not going to start till the third of next month. And if they have a serious bone in their body about taking care of their, their coverage, most of the time you overcome the price issue right then without even having to do a drop, because it's not that they're not okay with the price you quoted them. It's that they don't have the money today and they just don't want to say that. So once you realize that you can overcome that objection so much easier, but Again, if you haven't built up the trust leading to that, that line's not going to work. Excellent. Thank you very so, much. So, so that's that's good stuff. So, you know, let me let me just kind of remind you guys the way he said it. Our clients, in their mind, they're when you start talking about costs and you're giving them the quotes, the prices, in their mind, they think, well, I don't have any of the, I don't have that in the bank right now. Because that's, guys, and those of you, and I know we've got a few new agents that really kind of don't, uh, haven't been, you know, there's Chris that you just heard has been doing this for like 15 years. The first Chris that came on has been doing this for several years too. And they'll tell you, they, they've been in these people's houses and these folks, they are very low income. You know, a, a lot of these homes, the only way for me to describe it is those of you who don't really understand our clients. They don't think like you and me. They, in no way do they think like you and me. They're just trying to get by and survive day to day. Cost is always like super, super important. In their mind, when you're bringing up their cost, that's how they're going to think. Well, I don't have that money right now. That's why it's so important to address it in a very smooth, professional way that we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to take care of the money later. Right now, we need to just get you approved. So, and I really like the way that, that Chris said that. Steve, please, uh, if you have something to add, that would be great. Uh, yeah, good morning, Doug. I definitely want to add a little bit in there. And um, right. kind of piggybacking on both Chris's, um, but I'll just kind of like start with a question. But I'm sure if I did a survey on this call, like the majority of all the agents here, especially if they've been in, this, in the industry for at least a couple of years, um, all of the agents would probably say they run across an organization or an upline uh, that only gives them information that kind of just benefits, including these training type things that only benefits the organization or the upline 
it's not really useful per se uh, for the agents. Uh, but thankfully, uh, you know, thankfully our organization isn't like that at all. Uh, I think the, what, what both Chris has just relayed to us is information that can help uh, help each of us, not, not only help us, you know, along the way, but it actually can help us today when we go on the phone calls today. Uh, the first, Chris, when he talked about painting a picture of the kids at the funeral home and being turned away because they didn't have the financial resources to take care of everything, man, that's, uh, that's a great line that I'm actually going to start using um, immediately. And, uh, you know, stories, stories sell. So I think just painting that short story will help uh, help people along the way. And then the other, Chris, talking about building up trust. Uh, that's really mandatory. If you don't build up trust, you're not going to get the social security number. You're not going to get the banking information. So you definitely want to be always building up trust uh, through the whole presentation. So at the end, it becomes uh, easier for, for everyone. Um, but in short, Doug, I'd just like to say that um, United Final Expense Services, in my opinion, is full of A-class folks. Uh, in particular, you and Brandon, uh, like last week, everyone on this call may not know this, but my wife had a major surgery last week, and uh, Brandon made sure that I took the whole week off. I was thinking about trying to come in later in the week, uh, but he made sure I just took the whole week off. And uh, quite honestly, I probably could have did two weeks because this week's been back and forth, uh, but I probably could have did two weeks. But that whole full week to concentrate on my wife uh, definitely was needed. And then, Doug, uh, and, and for you, I, I've never had an upline. I can't speak for other folks, but I've never had an upline who made sure that my business is running efficient, efficiently, made sure my commission levels are straight. Uh, I simply have never seen that. So I definitely thank you for, uh, for everything you do as well. And then uh, collectively, uh, which you guys have done um, for a good friend of mine, uh, Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. Um, Sebastian doesn't mind this, but uh, he was struggling at his previous IMO because of the lack of system and a lack of resources uh, that was in play. And I told him about our system and uh, he came on board in the new year. And I mean, he's made, uh, you know, he, he's produced more income um, so far this year than he did for the last six months of last year. So, uh, so if you think about that, making more income in two weeks than you did over a six month span, previous six month span, uh, that, that's pretty huge there. Uh, so in short, I'm not going to take over the call, but in, but in short, Doug, I'd just like to uh, say from my experience, uh, United Final Expense Service is definitely an organization that just does what they say they're going to do. And I found that to be very rare in this industry. So I'd like to just thank everyone for that. Awesome. And thank you, Steve. And prayers out to your wife. Um, hopefully her recovery is going to get better faster. Yeah, it's good to see Sebastian come on board and, you know, his his first couple of weeks the guys at like 15, 16,000 of AP. So uh, uh, we love to see that with new agents. Very cool. Very cool. Congratulations. Does anybody, let me ask, does anybody else have anything else that maybe they would like to add to the conversation, to what we're talking about when it comes with maybe dealing with objections or um, maybe even addressing the objections up front? A any Anything else that anybody wants to add? Because that was a lot, of, and that was really good tight material. Hey, yeah, um, I think this was one of the recordings you sent me uh, from Chris T. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, but I really liked when he said, um, you know, when they say, "Well, I need to talk to my daughter about it," and I've used this one before. Thanks, Chris. And he said something along the lines of, "Well, you know what? What we can do is call her right after we do the application. You could have her call me if you like." Any questions she might have, I'll answer those. And I, I like that one a lot. I've never really used that one until recently. Excellent. Yeah, yeah that is that is very strong. Um, yeah, so those of you, once once you guys are, are, are on the platform and we get you set up with the training, one of the things that, that I do is I send you a few different recordings so that you can hear what, what some of the, the, the better agents, the more successful agents are doing. And I do send one recording that I edited. It's, it's about eight minutes of, of Chris doing nothing but overcoming objections. And then you can hear at the end where the lady's like, okay, I'm doing it. Great. And so, so yeah, that's, that's just part of the training. Guys, does anybody have uh, any questions at all? Anything else to add? Uh, no, no, this is Steve again. I like to add just one that I do, especially when it comes down to overcoming the objection. Let me talk about it with my kids and so forth. 
Um, and I'll probably, uh, again, this is what I use. I probably say you got to get your own comfort level uh, as far as uh, how you respond to folks. But what I'll ask them is, is simply, okay, so uh, when you speak with, you know, your daughter, Susan, um, if Susan says that uh, she doesn't think it's a good idea, they'll take care of everything. If that's what Susan tells you, are you comfortable with putting that burden on Susan? And then most of the time they say, actually, no, I still would do it anyway. Well, if that's the case, let's just go ahead and, you know, get it in place right now and just continue on, uh, continue on as normal. Uh, so that's, uh, I just try to get them to answer, to, to make the decision that even if their child says they're not, that it's not a good idea, you know, you as the parent want to take care of it. So why do you want to, so why do you need to go ask your kids about this anyway? Yeah, we, we, you got to make them think about it. You got to let them really, you know, um, personalize it. So that's, that's good. Uh, Andy, did you have a question or something to add? Yeah, I did, Doug. Uh, curious, both Chris has mentioned trust. And if you guys could share a little bit on maybe the two or three items that you keep in mind when you are thinking of trust and and maybe at this point, most of you inherently are able to develop the trust. Um, any answers to that? Actually, one of the things that um, <clears throat> I do with every client is I send over my credentials and it really puts people at ease when they see my insurance license and then also my driver's license. I mean, you know, they're going to get a card eventually, so they'll know my physical address anyways. But, you know, it, it really does, like the other day I had it, oh, I don't know, you know, oh, so sorry, I meant to send it to you. Is this a cell phone? Yes. Boom. Automatically straight through the system, a picture, pull it up. There I am. There's my credentials, my license number, my drivers, because I am going to get some, you know, important information from you. And I want you to have my important information so that you feel comfortable who you're doing business with and oh okay yeah that's okay and then you know they're, if they're going to buy it i haven't had anybody say oh i don't want to deal with you know socials and stuff like that over the phone once i send that to them they're just not going to buy you know and yeah, you know, guys, you know, a couple of things that we are doing, we just started implementing uh, something very unique where when we're calling these folks, they're seeing the agent's name. They're seeing who is calling them. Um, and that's that's a caller ID feature that we added to the platform so that it would increase the, the pickup rate. So right off the bat, you know, think about it. The whole way our, our system is designed is so that the trust is there instantly. You know, they're seeing your photo. They're getting text messages from you, reminding them about the uh, the appointment that you have. And then, and also one of the things that you can add, and this is one of the things I tell everybody, you want to have a little picture of something that you've got put together and ready to send in a text message of your driver's license, maybe with like the address crossed out, something like that. And then maybe a copy of the insurance license. And that's something that that is huge. And you can do that beforehand. Some agents will actually wait until the clients ask once they start with the, you know, with the lack of trust or the I have to think about it, all that stuff. That's when the agent's like, oh, I forgot to send you this. Let me let me just show you. So once again, it verifies that we are legitimate. These people have been getting calls for years from offshore call centers. So a lot of the time they're just not sure who to trust. And, and they're being told in their communities, never give out your social security number, never give out your banking number to anybody. The process that we use really eliminates a lot of that up front. And that's the whole idea of, of, of the call today. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're eliminating a lot of that up front just by spending time speaking with them. If you follow the presentation and use it as, as a guide, by the time you're given the quotes, you've already built up, you, you know, there's a few things you've done. You've You've built up rapport, okay, and that's, that's super important, but you've also minimized the objections by the way that you're speaking with them. And so the way I say that is you have this um, assumption of the sale mentality. And those, those of you that, that have been doing sales for, for years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the way that you speak with the client. 
you're, you're not speaking with them as if, oh, I'm just giving you a quote. We're speaking with them in a way that is like, well, I'm here to help you so we can get this started today. And, and that all, that mentality, all that, when you put it all together, that's how the platform works. That's, that's how you sell burial insurance uh, and funeral insurance and final expense life insurance over the phone. Let me just remind you one other thing that I said that's important. I, I know we've got some brand new agents that are on here that aren't quite, you know, I'm going back to the clients, the people we're speaking with. You guys, you got to understand there's certain things that we don't really, we don't really talk about. We don't talk about our home, for instance, because a lot of these folks, and this is what I'm trying to paint the picture. A lot of these folks barely have a place to live. You know, they're, they're surviving. They're living in their apartment. Um, unfortunately, in, in many, in, in many cases, there's, there's more people that probably are living in the apartment with them than should be living in the apartment with them. You know, so these folks are just trying to get by. So it's important to think and treat these folks in, the, in a different fashion than you would say, you know, if you were speaking with, I don't know, with me or, you know, maybe my brother, my sister, because, you know, the way that we live our life is, is a lot different. We've already got all the funeral stuff set up and taken care of. We are not in a position where we need a burial insurance policy. These folks have already passed on it over and over, and they've procrastinated it, and, and now they're in a position where they're kind of stuck, and they don't want to leave the kids stuck. Jason, please unmute yourself, and it, I would love to hear from you. Yeah, I think one line that sometimes I've used is, uh, you know, when they say, oh, well, I need to think about this, and I say, and I got this from when I was selling cancer insurance, but I tell them, you know, really everyone's so busy and my experience is only two times people think about this stuff like really think about it right now when you've got me on the line and I can answer any questions you have and you know when the second time is and I kind of wait for them and then they say when it's too late exactly that's it good stuff yeah yeah again paint the picture guys I hope you guys have a excellent excellent rest of your week anybody needs anything just reach out to me um, let me let me just say one more time. Does anybody else have any questions or anything to add at all before we end the call? Guys, you need anything, you know how to reach me. Please reach out to me. If you can't reach me, I would say reach out to Brandon. Any event where Brandon gets pretty overwhelmed at times where if you try to reach out to him, he may not reply immediately. Just reach out to me. In most cases, I can answer it. And if he's not getting back to you, it's probably because he is busy, busy, busy. Uh, that's that's kind of how things are right now. Guys, have a great week. Happy hunting.